<laughs> Highlight of my career yeah. as a professional triathlete was winning the Hawaii Ironman, the okay. World Championships in 2012. Yes. Second highlight was coming second the year before, okay. which plays well into the story and the lead up and everything. Yeah. Top 10 two years before that in a row. Okay. Um, and then the... With chronic fatigue, which yeah. we'll talk about. Yeah. <laughs> and so going back to my starting my whole kind of what's important in my life now yeah. and those factors are that, yeah, I was experiencing really bad fatigue from a teenager. Yeah. And I went from being at the top of the class to in year 10, I hit... And I couldn't concentrate, um, couldn't do anything at home and went to the bottom of the class and barely scraped through um, year 12. Well, it didn't really matter. It's just you do your tests and you pass and or not, it doesn't matter. I don't know if I passed or not, I don't remember. But I couldn't concentrate. And every now and then I would have fatigue in training. I was swimming a few times a week, a little bit of running and doing surf lifesaving. And it would really only bother me every now and then in training and I couldn't push, I couldn't get my heart rate up no matter what I tried. Energy was not available to me. Yeah. And, you know, 20 years later, um, basically, or 25 years later, now I'm 40. Yeah. And I feel I've found how my body works, how everybody's body works. That's been the passion of mine too. Alongside my career as a professional triathlete is yep. also to find my limits and how the body works and how I can just be the best version of myself. Wow, that's pretty cool. And we'll talk about that in a second. But So what are you doing now? Because we're going to go back and talk about um, that world championship in a second. But what are you doing now? You're a coach, you have a podcast. And what I also want to talk about is the fact that you're going to go try do Kona again, <laughs> which is pretty cool. So did I nail that? Is that basically what's going on right now? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I hadn't really thought that I've got that much, but I do. I'm, I'm, I'm coaching people for triathlon, just a few, handful. I'm a health coach, so yeah. I'm doing consults with people for getting their energy back. So a lot of people have experienced fatigue, yes. a lot have. Yes. Um, and they resonate with what they hear on my podcast, yeah. um, what they, they've read in social media and things about what I've experienced. Yeah. And so I do consults for health coaching. And yeah, in the last few months, gone back to being a professional triathlete as well. Wow. And done my first Ironman for three and a half years. Which we'll talk about shortly. Looking forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm setting myself higher and higher targets with what I want to be able to do in all those aspects of you know, careers that I have, those many careers that I've got. But it all boils down to the passion is figuring out how to get the most out of my body yes. um, and share that with other people so that everyone else can get the most out of their body and mind as well. Yeah. Well, I'm really eager to delve into the question like 10 years after the fact, you're going back to Kona and having a crack. At, and you're my age. That's why it's sort of like, I feel like there's a, you know, there's something about it that's uh, certainly motivating for me to see you do it. But going back to 2012, like how do you, how do you win an event like that? while suffering from chronic fatigue. That's what I'm so curious to understand. Yeah. Um, or train for an event and let alone win it. Yeah, so my fatigue would come in bouts yeah. and I won Hawaii when I was 30. Yeah. And up until that point, um, I'd probably had some bad bouts when I was in my early 20s and trained really hard mm. and maybe for a couple of months. But then it settled back to a day to a few days throughout the next, you know, my 20s to a yeah. week at the most. When but you then say, I'd when you say back. training hard, are you talking about um, volume or intensity or both? Both when I was, you know, early 20s. Okay. I tried both yep. and that didn't pan out and I had a big burnout period afterwards. But then after that, it was probably limited to about a week at the most, um, which is pretty easy when you're training a fair bit to have an easy week and then back into it, you feel good. Uh, easy day, you're back into it, you feel good. But it was always coming and going a little bit. And, but what happened was those four years that I went top 10 in Hawaii was that I'd gotten an injury in sort of the, the second, third th- uh, quarter of the year where I had to have about six weeks off. Right. So I really rested up. So I really only built up once Just a year. Just by coincidence. By coincidence. Once was a stress fracture and a metatarsal. Once was a crash and a collarbone. Another time was a bruised metatarsal. Um, and another time was, I think maybe just, I can't remember an illness or something as well. And, um, so I had this big break and then just built up slowly through July, August, and then that slow build up. And then I was doing Ironman training 
And that's where my philosophy of the more aerobic you are, the fitter and healthier you are. So because once I started training for Hawaii, I was doing big hours, so I was becoming very aerobic, a lot of oxygen flowing, a lot of good adaptations. And I was also limiting junk food in my diet a little bit. I never ate a lot, but in those last two months before Hawaii, it's like commitment raises another level. And so my diet was a little bit cleaner again. Mm -hmm. And I'm very sensitive to some foods. So I've got a, you know, a sense I've found out mm -hmm. in these last few years. Um, many, those are the main reasons why Hawaii worked. Like I reduced the stresses and also increased my aerobic capacity. And that's, you know, how I was able to get to that level um, in October each year. Yeah, right. At some point in time though, the chronic fatigue took over. Yeah, so after I was 30, you know, sort of coming back as a defending champ, um, I trained up pretty well, did a 70.3 here on the sunny coast um, about five weeks before Hawaii, 2013. But I was flaring up with a bit of a weakness in a glute and, you know, a little bit of fatigue. I just wasn't feeling on and, yeah, just didn't perform then and really hadn't performed since in, an iron, in a full Ironman, was never able to put together two months of great training ever again um, and until recently and yeah that just you know sort of took its toll on um, I kept trying and I kept trying because after a, ba a bout of fatigue my energy would come back and I'd feel good and I'd train solid for six weeks and then I'd be in a hole again mm. so age definitely has a factor yes because I'm not going to say that just because you're getting old you will get worse in performance or health or any of those factors it's not an excuse yes however age does mean that you are living longer with the same inflammations and those inflammations will get worse and worse and worse and have a more flow-on effect yes so time is more what i mean rather than age makes sense so how have you been able to establish what those inflammation markers are over the past you know five ten years and uh, was it diet related? Was it exercise related? What was it exactly? So yeah, I had issues and the way that I work now with people, uh, my philosophies are based around three pillars, which is nutrition, mindset and movement. Yep. So out of those three, yep, nutrition was a big factor for me. Um, I improved each time I limited my diet more and more to just the most nutrient dense foods and the least inflammatory foods that works really well for me. I can't tolerate a lot of, or any much really, you know, dairy and um, gluten and all the other stuff that people will just happily just chow down. What and, about caffeine? Yes, caffeine, right. I'm very sensitive to. Right. I didn't even touch caffeine till I was 30. Wow. And after 30, the smell started to, you know, chip away at me. Yeah. And I started to think the smell was nice. And then I started to have some on yeah. and off. So my 30s, before 30, never did caffeine right after 30 I did um, and yeah then it just was um, the pressure of trying to then keep performing so there's the mindset and when you've had fatigue and you when you have fatigue it also changes all your hormones you know mentally and everything so it's hard to get joy it's hard to feel motivated mm. all of those things drop so your brain then becomes a it gets this pattern of waking up in the morning and thinking, oh, I don't feel very good or how tired am I today? And so this pattern in your brain is partly due to the inflammation, the problems, but then it also becomes a pattern. And so you've got a work mindset to break out of the patterns while reducing inflammation from nutrition. And lastly, movement is for me, definitely genetically, I'm a much more aerobic base animal yep um you can sort of tell by my frame i'm not a you know someone who's going to bulk up really quickly um i'm quite slight and aerobically i perform way better endurance sports yes. has always been my thing i could never do a sprint for 100 meters i'd come last but i'd win cross country in school every year mm. naturally so, so so does that mean if you're training at intensity it would have quite a taxing effect on you versus another physiology yeah, I think it does. Okay. And hence why when I trained for Hawaii, but I was doing, you know, I'd be riding easy 15 hours a week of aerobic 
work and you know good aerobic work and you know, I was fit and so it was getting solid and solid and then swimming aerobic you know probably five hours a week of swimming and then running probably doing about four hours aerobic and maybe one to two hours a bit more intensity but I was so fit it was probably still pretty aerobic it wasn't like lactic it wasn't yes. it wasn't you know two minutes all out you know I wasn't doing FTP tests I wasn't doing 20 minutes all out mm. so very much aerobic based training isn't why my body became resilient because it had all this adaptation to the way that it produced energy in the mitochondria using mm. more oxygen yep. and all of those other benefits obviously your blood gets better um, and then if you're producing energy better your gut functions better because your gut lining is made of cells and it's the same energy that you're using for your muscles so more efficient energy means all your organs work well which means your digestion works better which means you repair quicker and any inflammation that I do do from high intensity intervals in training I recover quicker from because I've got that aerobic base so if I didn't have the aerobic base which I was doing in those times of oh, I've got fatigue now I've got six weeks to a race mm. let's let's cram and I would go hard that is when you know six weeks later i was in a hole again understand okay so you've figured all this out and i was probably still a in work hindsight, in progress in hindsight it sounds easy yeah it does it does absolutely and has it been through figuring all this out and as a result feeling better that has motivated you to now wanting to get back into it so you've you've done your first ironman in three and a half years is it just yep. recently cans um before you tell us how you went there um what, why? Why would this is a this is a hard event? Um, you've been there, done that. You've been in the top of the top of the world. Why would you want to go back and do it again? Yeah, and at, at, at forty one, you'll be at the yeah, time. Yeah, and there are guys in my position that have retired. Yeah, you know, and uh, but it's a it's a passion and it's a lifestyle, and I'm feeling the best I've ever felt in many in a decade kind of thing now. Wow, because I'm doing the hours aerobically. Right. And I'm enjoying it. I'm training with mates. I'm very aerobically fit. And that's a big part of me then being better in other aspects of my life, you know, coaching and um, being a better husband and, yep. you know, those sorts of things. So that is part of it. But also, I just want to keep testing my limits, right. which is the reason I ever wanted to go to Hawaii, which was I think I can be really good at that. Yep. So let's see if I'm right. Yeah and figuring out that puzzle of yeah. what is going on in my body and how can I optimize it. And then I do want to learn it, learn as I go so I can share it with other people as well. Yes. Because everybody's scratching their head, you know, about how they can improve, how they can get more energy. And then some people are asking, well, how can I do an Ironman better as well? Mm. And yeah, it's been great to consult with a few people that just did the same Ironman I did, mm. and they all had brilliant results. Right. Um, you so, didn't? Does that mean you didn't? <laughs> yes, that means I didn't. Oh, okay. I, you know, there's a big what went wrong in uh, yeah. my Ironman prep, you yeah. know, episode okay. in it. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, but is that to be expected, your first one back in three and a half years as well, no matter what sort of training you're doing, or you think that's not the case? It's not to be expected. Okay. It's it's something that you could have avoided. Yep. Um, avoided if I'd trained for a bit longer, if I'd done some other racing perhaps as well leading into it and, you know, found out a few of these issues before the race. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, I was very happy with how everything had gone. It had gone as good as it could, yep. you know, which is the same. Whether you're, you know, whether you're, missing half your heart or what it, or you're fully fit you still just have confidence that you're going to do the best that you can do yeah and i went into the race you know confident that i was just going to do the best that i could do and i was hoping that that was going to be better than it turned out but at the same time i'm motivated by the failures which i guess you know that's that's what anybody should be how they should think yeah. is if you have a failure, you know, figure it out and be motivated to improve on it next time. Absolutely.